sang greatly. Come on, hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you glory. There is none like you in all the earth. Hallelujah. Mighty and amazing, awesome, wonderful is our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and lift your hands. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory for all that you've done and all that you continue to do. Father, we stand in awe of your grace and your glory, your might. Thank you for your awesomeness. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the power that you placed on the inside of us. And we give you glory for the access to that power. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that this word will have the preeminence. Father, we thank you for the blood that will secure it. Thank you for the angels that will help us bring it to pass. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah again. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. I'm going to give our, our viewers, our online viewers, and those who have gathered with us online to go get your communion. And um, we're going to do communion. The Lord told me to tell the body that we were to influence, to do communion every day. And uh, we're going to do that. And he said, whenever we would meet, then we were to do communion. And you know, I'm going to obey God. So if you got a cracker, a piece of cookie, whatever that is, it's going to try mutate itself into the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and um, we're going to access these rams in the body amen amen, amen. hallelujah glory to God say so there's power in the blood you know why is it that the doctors take your blood because they want to find out what's going on with you. Uh, the life is in the blood. The Bible says in Leviticus that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And if you want to know what's in that flesh, you look at the blood. And that's why every day we engage the blood and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was on that night he was betrayed. They took the bread at the Passover Seder. And the Bible says that they broke it. And the Bible says that they gave thanks. Baruch Atah Adonai Malik Hoholom uh, Parfait. Blessed are you Lord God, King of the universe. Caused the bread to come forth. And then the Bible says that they engaged this consciously to know that they were going to partake of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want you to get that consciously, that you are going to eat this, that's going to bring reformation, transformation, healing, and deliverance in your body. Come on, I want you to repeat this after me. I apply the, blo the body and the blood of Jesus. Can we just read it together so we can go through it? I engage the DNA of God. I embrace the transforming power of the body and the blood of Jesus. I engage the record containing the light, sound, and frequency of God's image. Let's say that again and add love. I engage the record containing the light, the love, the sound, and the frequency of God's image. Yes, God. Hallelujah. I embrace the record of the dominions of released by the DNA. I engage that DNA record and apply it to my bones. I speak to my marrow and command it to live. I apply the frequency of the DNA to transform me 
into the image of Jesus. Transform every genetic record. Resequence my DNA into alignment. I apply the blood of Jesus to transform all impure genetic material. Be transformed. I apply the blood of Jesus to all iniquitous pa genetic patterns to be cleansed. I call all my genetic material to resonate with the DNA of God and come in alignment with my, my, my eternal image. To come into alignment with my eternal image. I choose to bear the image of my Father in heaven. I choose to bear the image of my brother in heaven. Let the breath of God be breathed into my life, transforming me into a living being, joined to the Lord, and one spirit with him. I speak creative words to my DNA to release the supernatural abilities of God. I trigger the ability to see in the realm of the kingdom. I trigger the ability to move in the realm of the kingdom. I trigger the ability to transform matters. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 He broke it. He gave thanks. And uh, Father, we give you thanks. And in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's eat together. Likewise, he took the cup. Said, this is my covenant in a new dimension. And as you drink it, you're going to remove it, any damnation, when you drink it worthily. You will resolve any sickness in your body, and premature death will give way to the life of the Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, let's drink together. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. glory. Say I'm healthy. I'm, healthy. I'm, wealthy. I'm wealthy. And I'm whole. And I'm whole. In, Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, we're in the month of Nisan. Amen. And the glory of God is about to do amazing things. And so even though we see a lot of things going on in the earth, there's still light in Goshen. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is going to show and has been and will be showing himself strong in this month to give us the revelation of why this month is the month of miracles. We've already seen the miraculous where God is skipping over people today in the name of Jesus. And weather patterns have to be manipulated in the realm of the spirit because a son of God lives in that particular area. Hallelujah. And so you're going to realize that you're coming out of bondage or slavery into your authentic self. And that you are coming out of labels and titles that were put on you that will not serve you in this next season. Oh, I just said something. Y'all ain't heard now. Labels and titles will come off of you that will not serve you in this season. And you're going to watch God take limitations and false titles off of you so you can be free to walk in the freedom of the kingdom and you're going to do it because the DNA of God is on the inside of you by light and frequency and the love of God to catapult you into the things that he's already ordained for you shout this is my season this is my month now 
Uh, the scripture says in Leviticus, we're going to go there, Leviticus 23, um, glory to God. And we're going to move into the essence of Leviticus 23, verse 1. Um, y'all just hold tight, and uh, I'll read it, and y'all will catch up. And, and, and the Lord spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and speak unto them concerning the feast of the Lord. Say the feast of the Lord. The feast of the Lord. Say it again. The feast of the Lord. These are not the Jews' feasts. Now, we're, we have already gone through Resurrection Sunday on the uh, Hebraic or the Gregorian calendar. But Passover, because this is a leap year, Passover comes 30 days almost after what we would call Resurrection Sunday. So in the leap year, uh, they are separated. And so even though people have been talking about the blood and the resurrection, uh, for those who follow God on the Hebraic calendar, we are entering into the Passover. All right. And so uh, just a couple of days ago, yesterday, we entered into the month of Nisan. The month of Nisan uh, is the month where it means miracles. And so we're going to see that, that you're going to walk in a ram, a dimension called miracles. Are you hearing me? And so if we see the Hebrew word uh, nasa or nez, N-E-S, I thought that was real funny, nez, uh, nezbit, nez is the first uh, part of my last name, which means miracle in Hebrew. Oh, oh y'all look at me funny. I got it, okay? Uh, nasha, it means test banner or miracles. It is hey, shemek, noon. Uh, and it, it means that as you're moving out of the testing, you're moving into the miraculous. It is a supernatural. See, you never go through a test without getting, getting recompense for the test. I need somebody. If I'm going to be tested, I got to be rewarded if I'm going to go through the test. And one of the lost dimensions that we have not retrieved or engaged in the body of Christ is that when we go through testing, we don't get recompense for what we went through. Even God knows that he has to recompense people because there is a law called sowing and reaping. It, it is, it is a, it's the reciprocity of the kingdom that God must pay you back if you sow something. Even the earth has a law. If you plant it, you're going to get a heart. Even good or bad. And so that means you're coming into your harvest season. You didn't hear what I'm saying. You're coming into your harvest season. Just go ahead and decree it. I'm coming into my, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. If you don't decree it, if you're, not, if you're waiting on somebody else to decree it, it's not going to come to pass. You got to decree it. It doesn't matter what it looks like, what it feels like. We are in this dimension, in this portal, where we are able to transverse things. And there are about 20 to 25 things in the next several weeks we're going to go over where you can access this month. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Now let's put uh, Leviticus uh, 23 back up there. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout it again. Shout it like you know God is going to do something amazing in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, look at verse uh, Leviticus uh, 23 12 and you shall offer that day a wave offering and a sheep uh, he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord he says you're gonna you're gonna bring a burnt offering unto the Lord a sheep and you're going to you're going to you're going to give it to him and then you're going to put the blood on the doorpost so that means whatever the enemy has already ordained for you this month 
it has to pass over. Why? Because your offering has already been given by Jesus Christ. We don't need a goat or a bull, but the Bible says the blood of Jesus is going to cleanse us and wash us thoroughly in the name of Jesus. Now let's go to Exodus 12. Let's go back to Exodus 12 and look what he says. He says, uh, uh, Exodus 12, these are the Lord's feast, said the Lord's feast. The word feast is mohadim. Mohadim means an appointment. God has an appointment with you this month. Amen. Now, there are many times when we want to engage God, but God says, I've set a time that I'm going to meet with you. Yeah. Now, now, you're going to have to press. You're not going to have to press. You're, not have, you, you're just going to need to show up. It's, it's, it's going it's, uh, it's gonna to be easy. This month is your easy month. No, no, no. See, you got to already put that in your consciousness that it's going to be easy this month. In spite of everything that anybody else is saying, in spite of the job report, in spite of what they're saying the economy is doing, this is your easy month. Come on, y'all say it. This is my easy month. Just go, just go ahead and put it in your spirit easy. Easy. And I want you to engage in war with that word easy. It's going to be easy to pray, easy to fast, easy to increase, easy to prosper, easy for, for, for financial, come on, uh, acumen. It's going to be easy. It's going, it's going to be easy to start the business, to start the ministry. It's going to be easy to make the connections. It's going to be easy, 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 easy. It was easy for the children. He said, go borrow the vest. Easy. He made it easy for them for all the labor for the 430 years God made it easy for them says my harvest he says speak unto uh, Exodus 12 1 and the Lord spake unto Moshe and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying this month <laughs> this month which is this month the month of Nisan is the same month. He said, this month. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. So this is the spiritual new year. Now on Rosh Hashanah, that's the civil new year. Isn't it amazing God gives us two times a year to reset? And so this is my spiritual new year. Say it. This is my spiritual new year. New year. This is my new beginning. He says, he says, he says, this is the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, speak unto all the children of, of the congregation of Israel, saying, in the tenth month or the tenth day of this month, you shall take unto you every man a lamb according to uh, the house after their father for a lamb for the house. Say a lamb for the house. Say it again. Say miracles. This month, he says, you're going to bring something in your house. In the first month, he says, a lamb for the house. And if the house be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to him, next to his house, take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to the eating, shall make an account for the lamb. And he says in verse 6, you shall keep it until the 14th day, the whole assembly. Y'all know what it is. And go to verse 13 real quick. Verse 12, verse 12, he says, And I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, against all the gods of Egypt, and I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be for you a token. Where? Upon your houses where you are. Upon your houses where you are. Where, where you what? The blood shall be a token for where you are. And when I see the what? I will pass over 
And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite. Why were we repenting the other day? Because the blood is going to be on our doorposts and God is going to pass over. So this is your month of miracles. Say miracles. miracles. Say it again. So we want to talk, and I don't want to get so involved into Passover, and, but I want you to engage this ram you're in. It's the month of Nisan, but it's the month of miracles, which is Nez. It is the month of miracles, and we're going to talk about the six rams of miracles. Six rams of miracles. The six dimensions of miracles that you can engage. Now, when God gives you a word or when you find a principle in the Bible and you get the green light from the Holy Spirit, you are to engage that until it comes to your house. Now, didn't God tell them to get a lamb? How was the lamb going to get to their house? Huh? They had to go get it. They had to inspect the lamb. They had to make sure it was a male lamb without blemish. They had to make sure, test it. Come on, that one's not good. Next, that one's not right. Next, that one's not right. Next. And so we lose the manifestation and the demonstration from the kingdom because we get stuck on the first. We don't say next. That ain't it. No, that is too little for my house. We just read, if the lamb is too little, go get a neighbor. We don't just settle for any. See, the enemy will manifest anything. And we're just so happy to see any kind of movement in the kingdom. We'll take something that God never ordained for us to have. No, that one doesn't work. That's too little. No, next. No, that one's got a blemish. Next. That one is limping. Next. That one eye is not right. Next. There, there he's got a scar on him. Next. And until I find the perfect blessing, until I find the right dimension of the manifestation that I'm looking for, I'm going to keep engaging that until it gets in my house. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And so you got to stop settling. You got to stop settling. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. There was a young lady had an accident and uh, she said they offered her something and then she came to one of our meetings and uh, I said, take the second offer. Sometimes we get enamored by the first offer. Wait till the second one. Took the second one four times more than what, see, see, I feel a four times more, four times more than what you were believing for, looking for, asking for, if you just wait on it. He says, don't be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, make your request known. Make it known. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Your neighbor say next. No, no, no. I'm going through and I need the breakthrough, but that ain't my harvest. That, that's not my harvest. That's somebody else's harvest. It's not mine. Don't get enamored by what the enemy will give you on the first, on the first engagement. Wait. The longer the wait, the greater the harvest. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the first realm of miracles we want to engage is healing miracles. Healing miracles, Mark 16, verse 18. Mark 16, verse 18. Say healing. healing. Now, each one of these we're going to see happen in the month of Nisan. And we know the Bible says that there was none feeble. After 1.3 million, 
Come on, people. The Bible says none were feeble. Not one had a sinus headache. Not one had a cold. Not one had bursitis. Not one. Not one had acid reflux. Now, they were so healed that the clothes that they were wearing could not. It could not disintegrate. The Bible says that the clothes didn't wear out. That what was on the body was reflecting in the clothes. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. That, 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 that there was no oldness, no decay. No tearing, no wearing out because whatever was operating in their body was operating in the clothes and the shoes. Uh, yeah, nah, that's why you have to be careful what you wear because, uh, are you hearing me? And, and uh, so I was listening. Uh, we're going to get to the scripture in a minute, but I hear the Holy Ghost. I was listening, and uh, this scientist, which is a doctor that's a Christian, uh, starts studying the blood and understanding the blood. And so um, they start looking at the blood and, um, and, and how the blood operates in the body and out of the body. So they take the blood out of the body. And as long as she's praying, the blood that is taken out of her body is having the same pulsation and the beat and the flow of her heart. Even though it's not in her body, as long as she is praying because her DNA is in the blood, that the blood outside of her is acting like it's inside of her. When she stopped praying, the blood started dying. As long as you are praying, the blood of Jesus that's on the inside of you is acting like it's on the inside of him. And that DNA will heal your body, cleanse your body, but you got to get on the same frequency. That's why we take communion and say we engage the frequency, the light of that blood. That's why you got to keep praying. That's why you got uh, Mark 16, 18. And they shall take, this is the commission, great commission. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall now what? Hurt them. They shall what? Lay hands on the sick. And they what? When, when, when the last time you engaged this? So what we do is we play catch up. So, so we wait till somebody gets sick and try to lay hands on them. No, no, no. We start laying hands on stuff because I'm getting comfortable. I'm getting comfortable laying hands on stuff. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I've seen people lay hands on cars and they recover. I've seen them lay hands on dead plants and they recover. I, I've seen, see, see, you got to start operating in, no, no, you know, well, she's sick, can you come lay, no, he told you to do it, but you got to practice. If you're going to engage the realm of miracles, he said, get a lamb for your house, but go get it. Go get a miracle. Don't wait on it, go get one. Okay, I'm looking for a miracle. I'm looking for a miracle. I'm looking for somewhere to put these holy hands because I got the DNA. And it ain't me healing him. It's the DNA that's on the inside of me. And I'm going to make that transfer. So I'm going to engage this month of miracles. And on purpose, I'm going to be looking for somebody to lay hands. Oh, the Bible said don't lay hands on no man. In this month, I'm going to activate a covenant. And they might not even know are you laying hands. You might just hug them and say, well, the Lord bless you. Yeah, because I've been in my prayer closet. And by the time I come out, that bless you is going to heal you. That word bless is barak. It means the totality of your being. That anything missing, delayed, or denied has to come into alignment with the frequency of the Almighty. You might just shake their hands. You might just say, hey, come on, darling, so bye-bye. That's my hand. My kata, you shall 
lay hands. You can put your hand. Mom, uh, high five. How are we going to heal a sick world if everybody waiting to come to church? How, how, how are we going to do that? I can't be everywhere. And then God ain't ordained me to lay hands on everybody. You got the power. He said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of any, and nothing shall by any means what? Hurt you. But you got, you got to activate that power in prayer. You know, we don't want to pray no more. I'm going to keep honing in till you become a people of prayer. Because you generate that through prayer. You, get, you can't watch TV because that spirit of prayer just jumped on you. You can't sleep at night. Somebody like, I got insomnia. I can't sleep because you're supposed to be praying. You pray yourself to sleep. Read yourself to sleep. You ain't got real insomnia because you can pick up that word and you can read that word until you go to sleep. You can pray until you go to, y'all, y'all look at me funny. I'm talking about real power is about to come to those who believe, not just the church, to those who believe. And I really want to change that word to them that believe because we got to see I heard a man say, there's a difference in believing and knowing. When you believe something, you're not confident that you really know it. If I ask you, if I ask you what color you are, what gender you are, you would uncertainty, you would, with certainty, you would tell me what you, you wouldn't say, I guess, I think, I believe. I believe I'm a man, I believe I'm a woman, I believe I'm black, white, Chinese, uh, or uh, what, Spanish. What I believe, I believe that. No. Not in the kingdom. At some point, you got to know. So we got to move from believing to knowing. No, I know it. There's no vacillation. Daniel 11, 32, the B part says, those that know their God, not believe their God. Those that know, no, I believe I'm going to heaven. No, no, you might not go. But when I know, no, I know that I know. I don't know how I know, but I know. I'm going to quit vacillating. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe I receive. No, I know I have received that. I know that. I, I'm not. I'm not wrestling with it anymore. So that word believe here gives their wiggle room now to, I don't know if I can, I believe I can lay hands, but when you know, and the results are not left up to you, they are up to God. You know you can cast out devils. Well, I believe, I believe I can. No, I know it. Well, I believe God healed me. No, I know it. There comes a point in your life when you engage that dimension of healing that you know. And you got to engage that. And if it's not for you, it's for somebody else. If you say, I'm not sick, you don't have to engage this. No, no, no. You got to engage it because somebody needs your hands. Somebody needs your faith. Somebody needs your compassion. Somebody needs your love. It's not just for you to lay hands on yourself. Let me go find somebody. And if you don't use it, it'll turn on you. See, you're an electrical current that has to release that re- electricity. We're a ball of energy. And when you don't release it, you're my cool, am I? It can lie dormant in you and it can over circuit some of your organs. You remember Jesus in the crowd and the woman touched him? He said, Whoa, virtue, power, something left me. That's how you keep more power is you release it and God will give you more because he can trust you with it. The reason you feel powerless is because you haven't released what God has already given you. 
You don't need power. You just need to release what you already have. Are you hearing me? Yes. Say healing. healing. So the woman of it with the issue of blood got healed. Uh, she got healed. Uh, it was a healing mir miracle. It was a healing miracle. The man who he sped on the ground and put the clay in his eyes and saw uh, men walking like trees. He said, wait a minute. Your healing is not complete. So, so there are healing miracles. And he had to lay hands on him again. Amen, amen, amen. Let's go to Luke 17. Say, I've been deputized to operate in miracles. Now, some of y'all going to challenge that. But, but it is what you know. It is what you know. It's what you know. Luke 17, verse 12. And there, as he entered into a certain, there was ten lepers, and y'all know the story. They lifted up their voice, and, and this was a healing miracle. He said, go show yourself to the priest. Yes. They were so excited or ungrateful or they didn't believe. They just so glad that a priest told them to go show themselves to the priest. The Bible says that only one turned back and gave thanks. But they were all healed. Yeah. Only one was made whole. So there was a healing miracle. He just spoke and it was, they were healed. Go show yourself. That, that's a principle right there. Go show yourself. If you know, I'm not going to even say believe no more. If you know you're here, you'll be like, see, look at this. Show yourself. Feel that. Show. That's why Jesus would say, don't go show yourself. He didn't want to bring, because people were so excited, they, they, they were just going to go show themselves. The moment I know, I show myself. It's a principle. Y'all getting it? It's a principle. Y'all in it? Aha. Say, go show yourself. Go, go. Go, go show yourself. That's a dimension of grace in showing yourself. Why? Because it solidifies my faith and bring glory to the kingdom. Are you hearing me? It shows people that the moment that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know. I'm not worried about, I don't know what the doctor said. I don't know what they, I know. That the moment somebody laid hands, I know that the moment that scripture leaped into my spirit, this thing had to get out of my body. It may not be all the way out of my body, but I'm going to activate that principle and show myself. See? See? So you start engaging that ram. Number two is notable miracles. I knew I wasn't going to get finished. Come on. We, we, we only got to two. Jesus. Uh, um, uh, the first one is healing miracles. The next one is what? Notable miracles. Notable. Say notable. notable. That means there's no denying. Acts 3, 1 through 10. Y'all know the story. This is when they were going up to the temple to pray. And there was a man. I think he was born as a priest because they laid him at a gate called Beautiful. Even though his situation was ugly. And they laid him. Isn't it amazing God to put you in a beautiful place with a handicap or with an ugly situation. He'll put you right where you're supposed to be. He, the place was, was called beautiful, but if you looked on him, he, it was opposite of what beautiful was. Uh, you got to look at where you are and know that 
how you enter the thing is not how you're going to exit the thing. Because God will sometimes, isn't it amazing that God put Moses in a basket and he floated right to the place that he was going to deliver? So don't look at where you are. Come on, look at, look at the spiritual dimensions of where God has placed you. The very place he was supposed to deliver. And then they call this little girl and he, she says, you don't have any milk in it in other words she said but I know this Hebrew who has milk who is Moses mother come on here you can't make this stuff up God has your life so in order don't negate who God puts in your life it might be your Moses and Moses' mother, who trusted God, put him in the Nile. Come on, Pharaoh's sister picked him up. And the little slave girl said, hey, there's, a, there's a Hebrew that's full of milk. Yeah. And his mother gets to nursing. Yeah. Are, are you hearing me? Let me tell you a secret and I'm gonna, I'll be through. This life you live is between you and God. Everything in your life is between you and God. If you cannot run them through God, it is not for you. This life you live is between you and God. God, from your spouse to your children to everything, your money, everything. What do you say about this, God? The life you live is between you. Don't you ever forget it. The life you live is between you and God. And sometimes God has to use them so you'll run back to him. I'm going to say that again. God will sometimes use them to make you run back to him. Because this life is between you and him. And he gets to choose who you marry, who you love, the children you have, the job you have, the monies that's in the bank. He gets to do that. Let God choose your life for you. No. No, no, no. I think he's no no no. What did God say? Let God choose your love. Let, let God be your everything. Let, let God tell you where to live. No. You you tell no no no. You let God tell you what to give and how how why, how to give, how to love. How to worship? How do I engage you? How do I build my intimacy with you? How do you become one, number one in my life? How do I dethrone every idol that I had? How did I get on this? Ah, how do I dethrone every idol in my life? Every person that I put over you, everything, every thought. Forgive me for spending more time thinking about other things than thinking about you. This life is about me and you. And when you do that, your kids won't get on your nerves because that ain't my job. This life is between me and God. That's his kids. I was just a surrogate. And so worrying about them puts them over God. Worrying about your spouse puts them over God. Let God process you. Then he'll work on them. And sometimes the problems you're having with them is not about them. It's about God wants you back he's so he's so jealous and he loves to spoil us 
that he don't like for us to be out of his presence long. Have you ever had a child and they hadn't called you in a while, talked to you in a while? What do you say? You don't know how to call me? What's wrong with you? I've been worried about you. Why you haven't called me? And if they don't call you, you start blowing up their phone. What? And God start blowing up stuff around you until you call him. Lift your hands. Y'all, I got stuck. I don't want to keep you long. Uh, this is the month of miracles. The Bible says Peter and John is walking by the gate called Beautiful. And they see somebody that needs compassion. The reason we don't engage people anymore is because we've lost compassion. The Bible says that Jesus healed because he was moved with compassion. And we're not moved anymore. Our hearts have become callous and cold. And that we can walk by people and not, and not, yeah, yeah. Are you hearing me? Because as we're gauging this miraculous ram, we've got to have the compassion. That father, if father said, we so one, if father said, go bless them or lay hands on them. I can do it without fear because I know it ain't me. That me and him been so engaged with each other that he's just going to work through me. And that he's loving them through me. They might not ever feel the love of anybody. They may have wanted to take their life and say, if somebody don't say something to me, so the love of God has come through you. And, and Peter says, silver and gold have I none. Isn't it amazing that God never gives you what you ask for, but he gives you what you need? You might not need right money right now. You, 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 you might need a level of protection. You, you, might not, might, you might not need that love interest right now. He may need to mature you in some areas. God doesn't give you always what you want, but he'll always give you what you need. And the crippled man, the man at the gate, wanted money, but God wanted them to be healed. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Oh, I got something. That's better than silver and gold. And I want you to always remember that you house something greater than silver and gold. I don't care what it is, what treasure it is, what amount it is. There's something in you that is greater that somebody needs for you to access so they can be healed. And the Bible says that they simply took him by the hand. And, and took him up. Take up your bed and walk. Whatever was hindering you, you carry it now. No. If it's debt, you take up debt. You war with debt until you win that battle with debt. And you win that battle with paid off. Ah, paid in full. You win that debt. And then you pick up debt and you carry it. You pick up sickness. Wait a minute. All they did, all they said was take up, get up, rise up and what? Walk. And the Bible says his ankles and all times of things start coming together, getting strength because of the words. This is the month that you're going to have to open your mouth and a miracle is going to come out of your mouth. I don't believe it. I know it. I know that when I open my big mouth, a miracle is going to come out and hit somebody. Say, I carry miracles. Say it again. When I open my mouth, miracles can come out of my mouth. Miracles are coming out of my mouth. Do you receive that? I said, do you receive that? Do you know that? Do you know that something just leaped in your spirit? And that you carry miracles. 
mankale makoda makata kale bakate mukule bakate kele mansata ana masa shout this is my month of miracles say it again now the next couple of weeks we'll finish this and move into a grace and a glory that, and you're going to be engaging the word miracle nes N E S nes on the shaw which means miracles and i want you to i want you to decree miracles at least 50 times a day come on do it do it 10 sessions five times a day however you want to do it miracles are in my house miracles are in my mouth miracles come from me you're decreeing the miraculous realm of god do it especially when you get up in the morning and before you go to bed don't let the enemy take our technology all right come on that's new age we're in a new age no, we're not a new age principles because they got them all out of our, our Bible. Amen. So this is our age to operate in the miraculous and the supernatural. Lift your hands. Father, we thank you that you've graced us in this first month. At the beginning of the year for us, a spiritual new year, we thank you even now of the infusion of the miraculous. We thank you for the creative beings that will carry miracles and the angels that are assigned to the miraculous and supernatural, that they will have the freedom to come to the earth and to uh, release that which you've already ordained to happen in the earth. Uh, uh, deputize these, your people that are listening. Uh, even now, uh, let fear shine. Oh, I feel the anointing. Let fear leave them. Give them the element of boldness by stretching forth your hands to heal according to your word and acts. Uh, and then, 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 most sumana that notable miracles, healing miracles, creative miracles, uh, pro uh, provision miracles, miracles that will be in their houses. Father, we thank you for your glory and your grace. Uh, solidify it, secure it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. It is so. Say it is so. Say it is so. Say it is so. Say it again. Say it again. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's ear, I don't know if you're online or here, but somebody's ear, that you've had a ringing in your ear, your ear just popped. It popped for the last time, and, and you can hear. It felt like water was in your ear. And... Um, You've had some drainage out of their ear. And, and while we were decreeing miracles, uh, it happened in your ear. Uh, it happened in your ear. There's a lady who have been having cru uh, excruciating migraines. Uh, if you notice, uh, uh, there's no more pain. And the blurriness in your eyes from the migraine is leaving now. You are getting clarity in your vision in Jesus' mighty name. Can we just pray for a minute? I feel a grace here. I, there's a person who has a hernia. That hernia is leaving your body now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody has had, you cannot open and close your hands because of arthritis. I want you to begin to work it. You'll see that the pain is leaving now. There are miracles happening. Come on, decree. There are miracles happening. Miracles are happening. And uh, there's a lady, you have been on your cycle for two months. If you go to the bathroom, it's dried up in the name of Jesus. 
If you go to the bathroom, it is dried up in the name of Jesus. Mangele man subandita ne 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 man shobanganda in the name of Jesus. Give God praise right there. Thank you. 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 Somebody has had issues with their throat. I issues with their throat. It may be online. You've had issues with your throat and your voice. Um, um, God is healing that. You have not been able to talk above a whisper, but you're going to yell and that thing is going to break in Jesus' name. And if you, you've experienced the healing power of God, go ahead and type it in. Let us know or inbox us and let us know what God has done. Amen, amen, amen. Shout it is so. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, we want to do that now. Amen. We're not going to play with you tonight. You know if you need it, you need him in your life. You can't do life without Christ. You cannot. You can't not get to the kingdom without Yeshua. You cannot. You cannot. And the way through is the door. The Bible says he knocks at your door. You become the door that allows him to come in. And he wants to sup with you. He wants to live with you and have that interaction and engagement with you in Jesus' name. Repeat this prayer after me. Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask you to forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me. I believe you died. You were buried. You rose. You ascended into the heavens and it seated on my behalf. Forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me. I make Jesus Lord of my life. Baptize me with your spirit. And I'll forever give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Can you give God praise for all of those who gave their heart to the Lord? Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, it's time to give. We're going to sow. Amen. Life is between you and God. If you want to see a breakthrough in your finances, ask him, what am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to give to? What's the timing on this? How do I access this dimension? Hallelujah. 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 We give God praise. Amen. Amen. The ways to give are on the screen. Amen. You can go to cash app, D dollar sign, D-W-O-M-1-2-6. You can go to Give Lafay and find Dominion World in Marion, Arkansas. And you can go on our website at dominionworld.org and give there. Amen. 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 God is doing phenomenal things. And you're going to see tremendous breakthrough uh, in your finances. Just by engaging um, communion, you're going to see God do some phenomenal things in your life. In Jesus' name, lift, lift, lift your seed. Father, we thank you that as we bring our tithes and offering to you, we lay them at the feet of our high priest Jesus. We're in heaven. He receives them there. We thank you now for the blessing of the tithe and the offering. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout, I'm abundantly supplied. I'm abundantly supplied. I'm abundantly supplied in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're serving a mighty, awesome God. And uh, you can go ahead and give your seed. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Um, glory to God. Don't forget, I'll be in Detroit on Friday. And then y'all will be here, amen, which is going to be an amazing yes. gift, yes. amen, um, and a great outpour of the glory and the power of God, amen. And then don't forget, uh, we'll be in Texas, uh, amen, on the 20th to our manifest, and then we're going to have our Passover impartation and Passover weekend. People are coming in from everywhere, I promise you. I don't know if we're going to have even room 
for all the people. Uh, so they're coming to cross over with us, and God is going to do amazing things, the 26th and the 27th. So coming, we're going to be at the Radisson Hotel. So do let's come. Amen, amen, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Amen. Amen. Um,